so that was business cards. Let's touch on uh, our social media stuff that you guys should be uh, thinking about. So um, now again, you're not required to to have any specific social media account, but clearly I think it's it's helpful. Um, I think it's most helpful for you guys to have your blog where you can control the narrative. But nevertheless, there is also value in uh, in some of these uh, larger, more mainstream uh, social networking sites. And so these are, I think, three that are probably the most relevant to you guys in the course of wrapping up your scholarship, heading off into the career world. Um, something someone just commented on on my one of my videos I put up was that uh, he uh, liked my video and he tried to get on ResearchGate and he found out that you can only get on ResearchGate when you have a .edu email address, which I didn't realize. I thought anybody could go on there. So um, if that is even vaguely of interest to you, I would suggest you guys get onto that now so you can get, get into the system um, right uh, before you're, you're maybe not allowed in after graduation if you lose your .edu uh, email address. But anyway, here are these, um, here are the uh, Facebook, you guys know about Facebook, LinkedIn, you guys know about LinkedIn, and ResearchGate, we've talked about ResearchGate in the past. Um, these are the years when they were started, and who the audiences are. Um, clearly, uh, Facebook is by far the largest, um, and uh, yeah, so you, you guys can have a, a look at that. Um, uh, Facebook tends to skew a little bit uh, female. Um, LinkedIn is more uh, even, um, and you can see the, the breakdown there. Well, for both of these sites, the majority of uh, users tend to be older, older than you guys, um, because old people like them for reasons I don't entirely understand. Uh, we don't have any data on ResearchGate. Um, yeah, so um, now this like, share, comment thing for Facebook, you guys might have heard is now changing. Now we're going to have five different ways to express uh, reaction to things, but, but traditionally it's only been the like and share and all that kind of stuff. Um, uh, yeah, so again, the difference is LinkedIn is really designed to be a professional uh, f for finding jobs and hunting jobs, ResearchGate primarily for sharing scholarship, uh, whereas obviously Facebook is for uh, any type of general social networking, mostly informal. This is a poll, did I show you guys this before? Okay. So this is, a, this is the most recent um, uh, data that's out there, which is from uh, the, the 2004 year, because we just wrapped 2015, so that, I don't know if they've actually published that yet. But um, this is a, an annual survey this one firm does that uh, they ask different people that do, are doing hiring what they use. Now, this isn't necessarily directly applicable to all of you. We tend to be in fields that don't necessarily rely so much on LinkedIn and these and, and Facebook and these types of uh, entities for recruiting, but some but there's definitely jobs for you guys out there and people definitely use these. So if we were talking about just business or some sociology major, psychology major, this would be much more appropriate for you guys. It's relevant, but but it's um, there are many other venues that we typically uh, use to f advertise and find jobs. But nevertheless, let's have a look at it. So of the social media uh, places. This is asking people that are professional recruiters for different uh, industries or companies. And what they say is that uh, LinkedIn is by far the most um, common network that they use, followed by Facebook and then Twitter. And I'm sure all you guys just crawl in Twitter looking for the job announcements. Uh, and then uh, everything else is uh, much smaller. Uh, so this, I think, is perhaps a more useful uh, insight that would, I think, apply to not just the particular social media platform, but it could apply to your blogs or however you're presenting yourself online. And so this is what did people use um, to, uh, to, uh, to hunt down people, to find people. And um, I would say look on LinkedIn because that's the one that's more professional. What you find is professional experience, length, uh, how long people have been in their current job, um, uh, industry related stuff. So and then we start getting into activity. These first couple things are aspects about you, right? Um, now, one thing I noticed that when you guys go into these, when you're filling out your, your uh, experiences, you guys maybe don't pay particular attention to this thing, this length of professional tenure. But clearly it's one thing that when people are gonna go check you out, that's one of the things they're gonna look at. 
And they're going to say, oh, this person has a job. They, if they had this job for a week or if they had this job for a couple years, right? And now you can't, you can't necessarily control that, but just do realize people are, are commenting on that. And so you should probably fill that, that component of your profile out. Um, yeah, okay, good. Um, how do people use uh, these networks to find candidates? So, they, a lot, so mostly they use them to search for people, type in people's names, type in people's uh, discipline, that kind of stuff. Um, a large number of folks re replied they use social media to reach out as a, as a vehicle to, to go get these folks. That's probably a consequence of a lot of these networks not necessarily easily having your email outside or, or a way to reach you outside of this network posted so they can see it. But in any event, um, people are using this to reach out to, to folks. Um, and uh, what you see here, that, so LinkedIn is much more, I would say, more of a traditional type of employer assessment. Facebook is more of... Uh, um, Facebook's more kind of looking at the social network of how you sit. But have a look. Uh, in the top five of all these things, whether it's LinkedIn, Facebook, or Twitter, vetting candidates before the interview. Vetting candidates before the interview. Vetting candidates after the interview. So just to be clear, what this means is after, you've, after they found your Facebook profile, they're going to go uh, look at you, and then you're going to go to their office and give an interview, and they're going to come back or at least you know, about a third of the folks, and see if you made any comment about them, right? So I hope we've all left this era of you guys getting naked on the bar and doing shots and putting those pictures up there. <laughs> but just in case some of you are still doing that, I need to reiterate that, um, these, that, that recruiters are looking for that exact thing. You need to change. Tevin needs to get a new profile picture. Uh, so, for example, our most uh, uh, when our most recent uh, uh, graduate went and took a job up in San Francisco a couple weeks ago, one of the things they told them is you have to tamp down all your social media activity. Why? Because uh, the the company said this now reflects on us. So you can't, you can't use social media. Or if you use social media, it has to be closed down. It can't be associated with us. In other words, the, the, the identity that this person built up, which was at least partly one of the reasons why he was able to secure this job, I think, now they're like, great, by the way, now that's influencing us. So just realize that that, 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 um, that, that occurs. Uh, so, yeah, so if you are on LinkedIn, uh, do join our ESRM jobs uh, guy. It's a, closed, it's a closed list, so I think if you go to search for it, you can't find it. But the way to do it is if you want to get on, you just join LinkedIn and then uh, link with me and then send me a reminder email and I'll, I'll link you into that uh, jobs group. But you do not have to do that if you don't want to. Um, same thing with ResearchGate. You don't have to do that, but I think it'll help you guys find publications and everything. And I'll, I'll, I'll resend around the link to my orientation to ResearchGate that uh, I did in the fall for you guys. In general, meetings are great places uh, and probably the most natural place for you guys to do your networking. And so as I, I put this in to remind me to say that you guys should go to as many meetings as you can. So Hayden was just asking, Hayden was just saying that there's this conference in a couple weeks up in Sacramento, and can he go to it? Uh, absolutely, absolutely, totally, right? So, so this is now the point when it actually would be useful. For, I mean, it's always useful, but it'll be more useful because now you can actually contribute your scholarship to the meeting, right? It's, it's great even to just go to a meeting, but it's even better to go and you guys present some of your research. So I'd strongly encourage you guys to think about that. So one relatively easy one is the Southern California Academy of Sciences, which just about everyone, if not everyone's scholarship would totally, uh, you know, it's a perfect meeting for that, small meeting. Two years ago we had it here on campus. Uh, uh, pretty chill meeting, a, a decent number of undergraduates will attend. This year it's at USC, right? Is it USC this year? Yeah, it's at USC. The deadline for abstract submission is today. So, perfect, because everybody has already submitted their abstract to SAGE. Perfect, thank you. Uh, so you can just take that same abstract, 
slap that same title in, slap that, and what, what's the registration cost for that? Do you guys remember? 35 bucks. 35 bucks. There you go. It's, April, it's a May, it's the weekend before our SAGE conference. Eight, seven. <coughs> Something like that. Six and seven. So, uh, uh, not, nobody has to do that, but you know, absolutely. And then in the summertime, and then in the fall, even if you guys are graduating, we have the Island Symposium, which a lot of your work would be perfect for, which is gonna be in Oxnard, another relatively cheap meeting. Avail yourselves of those opportunities. Um, uh, perfect, uh, well, there are obviously other ways to build your social network, but that's a great way to start. If you guys haven't um, really uh, been to any meetings, please consider attending uh, these meetings. And all kinds of crazy things happen, like sometimes firefighters come and kick you out of your hotel room. Um, so here, for example, this is two years, two, wait, two years ago or last year? Two, yeah, two W, yes, yeah, so this is two falls ago. So this is uh, one of your colleagues presenting some of his uh, capstone research up in, this is up in Tacoma. Um, but just realize meetings really do vary. Do not take away from my conversations here that meetings are all in some hotel room in a, you know, in a Hilton or something. A lot are, but uh, they can be anywhere. So. Uh, we have, they can be big associations like this. This is one in Memphis. Uh, this is one that's relatively small and was built around doing stuff. So in some cases, meetings are get together and share your scholarship. In other cases, it's let's do something. Let's work on a policy for the county. Let's produce something. In this case, we were, I don't know, hacking or some, something. I don't, I, don't, I don't exactly understand. We were coded or some, some baloney. Um, uh, and then, for example, this one up on top is, a, is, an, is it's a meeting but it's all walking around. In this case, it was teaching people uh, native grass species, showing them stuff. Everybody was sharing their scholarship, walking around on a hillside. So there are, there are, there's a diversity of meetings. By meetings, I don't necessarily mean sitting in a dark room and, and, and listening to people while you drink bad coffee, um, but that certainly is part of it. Um, and they're great places to network. And one of the things that I really like about the poster option for you guys, especially at this stage in your career, is it's a great way for you to talk to a lot of people. And so, uh, in this case, this is a, one of our uh, graduates from a couple years ago uh, talking about, again, her capstone scholarship. And awesome, 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 awesome. So in this case, she has brought, so uh, Tevin and Dorothy were brought, brought props to the meeting that they went to last week. In this case, um, we have props in the form of uh, owl, uh, uh, mammal skulls and things. Anytime you guys can do something like that, this is, it's as if you're putting out a bunch of beers or a bunch of cookies, right? So it's another thing to catch people, make them stop, make them look. Hey, ooh, ah, uh, what's that? Another reason to talk to them. So when, it, when we get to do it, when we get, it comes time for Sage, everybody has to have a poster, that's, that's obvious. But if you only want to have a poster, that's totally cool. But if you want to bring something else in, that's great. If John wants to bring in one of his fittings, if he wants to bring in one of his uh, you know, weed whackers, that's cool. If you guys are doing a GIS project, and maybe it's a little bit hard to visualize some of the stuff on this two-dimensional, you know, this printed piece of um, paper, have your printed piece of paper and then bring a laptop in on a small desk and have a, have a, a video loop of your, of your uh, you know, hyperspectral imagery data, historic data, whatever, right? The more things you guys can do without being kitschy, but the more things you can bring that will engage the public, let them spend more time with you, give you more of a chance to interact with them, explain your scholarship, uh, the better. More about uh, our posters after break. Uh, and then again, we, we already touched on this, but, but here we go. Solid, what's that? Yeah, there you go, tie. So here's less. So Les was from a couple years ago giving, uh, presenting his scholarship and, you know, full on tie bowed, right? So not a problem, right? One in doubt, always go, like I said, a little bit, uh, a little bit higher. And you want to make a, oh, look at that. You always want to make a good impression. Okay. So um, the other thing, yeah, so tell. So the other thing is, uh, uh, the other assignment I want you guys to work on that's going to be due this Friday, I'll, I'll, I haven't posted it yet, but I'll post a Google Drive uh, for this, is uh, for you guys to um, uh, evaluate each other. You guys are together. Okay, so everybody, everybody knows who their partner is, right? I'll have to email the folks that aren't here. But so, okay, so this is the task. Now, I only want you guys to spend 
uh, you know, 10, 15 minutes on this. I don't want you to spend hours and hours and hours. That's not the point. What you're going to do is you're going to create a quick profile for your partner, and your partner's going to do the same for you. Okay? So hold on. I know. It's all good. So by midnight on Friday, you guys, this is due. What do I mean due? What I mean is you have to email a copy of the document to your bud and save a PDF version of that and stick that, or Word, whatever, it's the electronic version, and drop it in the Dropbox. And I'd like it to say, uh, start the person's last name who's, who is being evaluated. Okay? Let's talk about what you're going to do. Okay, here we go. So what you're going to do is you're going to go to your computer or, your, or our computer here, wherever you're going to do, and you're going to go to the web browser. You're going to turn on private browsing. So you want to make it as anonymous as possible. Ideally, a new browser or somebody else's, your mom's computer or something, right? Because the browsers, and we all know this, right? The browsers are getting very smart. And so you guys, they'll know that you guys are a CSUCI person or whatever. So we want to make it as anonymous as possible. What you're going to do is you're going to search for your partner's first and last name first. Just trying that. Do I find them by typing their, those, just that, first, last name? Yes or no? Okay. If you find them, great. If not, then start adding in things. CSUCI, ESRM, you know, descriptors that you think would, would help describe this person. And so, um, so then you're going you're gonna to find some information about this person. The first thing you're going to do is you're going to say uh, how you first were able to find them. So found you with your first name and last name. Found you with your first name, last name, and CSUCI. Found you with, right, so that kind of thing. So what we're doing here is we're emulating. I met you at a meeting, right? That's cool. Didn't get your business card. Oh, shoot. What was that person? I'm going to go look. I'm going to go see if I can find them. The, the overall question is, how easy are you to find? How easy is it for some Joe Blow to, to track you down and to actually find you? Okay? All right, so, so that's the first thing. First thing is to search, search for them until you can find them. Then you're going to make a, a little document, and that's going to have your partner's name and your name. And then you're going to grab the first picture of them that you can find, that, that you're, you're sure is this person. I mean, you guys know who we are, but you, you, you get what I'm saying, right? Um, because what's going to happen, the employer is going to probably look at your picture to say, is this the, right? This is why you embed a picture on your blog, right? And you're about me, that you can actually see who you are, right? And so this is going to say, uh, okay, I got the, so here's your picture, you know, just, just grab it, it can be low res, that's fine, you just grab it and stick it in there, copy, paste, insert it into the document. And then, uh, uh, where did you find it? Where did you find it? I got this off your blog. I got that off the of CSUCI news page. I got this off of whatever, right? The Santa Rosa, somebody, whatever. <coughs> and then, um, and then, so where did you get the picture? And then, if there, was there a lot of other photos of you or no? Okay, again, this is going to be, to, to help, those would definitely confirm, that would help people confirm that they found the right person if there's a lot of photos of you. Okay, next is, uh, looking back at the web stuff, um, three points, to be bullet points. I, I, again, I don't want this to be a bunch of big time suck, but just really quick, just you know, a couple of uh, sentence fragments. But what are the key experiences slash background that, that I learned? So I found Amy, and then I looked at the web page about Amy. What did I learn about Amy, right? Oh, she's doing this research on this stuff. Oh, she went to this place, like that kind of stuff, right? The, the, top, the first three things, again, someone that doesn't know you, is kind of thinking, eh, that person might be someone I might want to think about hiring, but let me learn a little bit about them, okay? And then, the, and then also, uh, from where? From where? So am I getting that off Facebook? Am I getting that off your blog? Am I getting that off a news story? You know, where, where am I getting this information about you from? And then, again, without spending hours and hours, uh, was there any clear red flags that you noticed? Oh my gosh, this was this picture from this party in 2011. Wow, you should get rid of that picture, right? So there, is there anything that, again, a naive person might see and kind of go, whoa, I don't want to engage with this, uh, 
with this person. And, uh, and then, uh, just like with any red flags, after you've done it for 10 minutes, what was the main source? Was the main source Facebook? Was the main source your blog? What was the main, you know, where, where was I getting the, this, this overall feel for you from? And then, again, like I said before, you're gonna email it to your bud so he or she has it. And then, uh, also you're gonna drop a copy into our drive so that I, I can see that you guys did it, okay? Purpose is not to necessarily embarrass anyone. That's not the purpose. Is. The purpose is to provide an independent assessment so your bud can know if a random employer comes up and searches for you, what that person is potentially going to see, right? So I'd much rather you guys find it and point it out to each other than having some prospective employer find something that is maybe of concern. And there we go. Okay, great.